Hello again and welcome to Marketing with Purpose. My name is Monica Pitts and I'm in prep mode right now. I am prepping to go on a podcast appearance with Positively Living Podcast and we're going to talk about Mailer Light versus MailChimp. Did you just get chills? Are you as excited to talk about these two different systems as I am? And I thought to myself, like, why on earth would I bore you with this information? Like, how consumable is it really via audio? And then I had to think back to this weekend when I searched for every podcast I could find about St. Croix because I'm going on a trip to St. Croix. By heavens, I am going. We were supposed to go over Christmas, but we all got COVID and so... (laughs) We were marooned in our house instead. And I love to consume information via audio. I don't even care what kind it is. I I listen to people talking about getting ready to move to St. Croix, people who were setting up a business there, people who were just traveling there, talking about the beaches. Like, I loved it all. I really, really enjoyed it. And then I thought to myself, you know what? Maybe you're one of those people, too. And maybe the only time you have to really learn about the difference between MailerLite and MailChimp, which are both email marketing systems, in case you didn't know, but I'm sure you do. (laughs) Maybe you're thinking about switching to one or another. It might only be when you're driving in the car, right? That might be the only free time that you have. And so let me fill that free time for you today with this breakdown of my experience using each of the systems. Now, I was a huge huge MailChimp fan, okay? Until I had to use it regularly myself. It has some very positive features. I'm gonna do some serious complaining about MailChimp though. Uh, When I do it, I am not saying that it's not right for you. I support over 60 clients who use the system and they love it. It does exactly what it needs to do for them, but most of them are actually distance users of MailChimp. So they don't use it frequently. They're not in it all the time. They're not building automations in it. They're not doing their own reporting. Some of them do use it frequently, but most of them just let the emails auto-generate from their website and pass through MailChimp and send to their audiences. And then they just email me when they don't understand something or when things get really weird. Now, when I started relying more and more on email to market my business and then lost my email making magician, I actually had to start using MailChimp myself on a daily basis and not just troubleshooting for my clients, but actually like administering our marketing. And I quickly found myself building spreadsheets to like manage the process of building and reporting. And I upgraded to the over $100 a month package thinking this is really what I need. This is exactly what I need to make the system more efficient for me to use. But that came with its own set of misadventures as well, which I will let you know about. So after I had the painful experience of using it all the time, I actually pulled the plug after interviewing many, many email systems, anything from like Send in Blue to Convert Kit. If any of you guys are members of Nonprofit Marketing with Purpose, you probably remember when like every day for two weeks I was posting the random email systems that I was reviewing and telling you what they did and didn't do and why I liked and didn't like them. Yeah, that was fun. That was a fun journey, wasn't it? And I actually ended up settling with MailerLite. Now, as you know, <laughs> nothing's perfect, and MailerLite is certainly not perfect either, but it is it is better for me, sort of. I mean, I, I guess I at least I hate it less. <laughs> so I have created new workarounds, and I still have a stupid spreadsheet, but at least now I don't need Google Maps to find my way around my email marketing software. So. I'm going to give you my honest review after using MailerLite for the past year and a half and MailChimp for I don't even know how many years. So that way you can see which one might make you less ticked off as you're building your marketing emails. So let's get to business. You're on a mission and you just need more people to know about it. And whether you're brand new to marketing or a seasoned pro, we are all looking for answers to make marketing decisions with purpose. I'm Monica Pitts, a techie, crafty business owner, mom, and aerial dancer who solves communication challenges through technology. This podcast is all about digging in and going digital. I'll share my marketing know-how and business experience from almost 20 years of misadventures. I'll be your backup dancer so you can stop doubting 
and get moving towards marketing with purpose. I'm gonna break this comparison into chunks. I'm gonna talk about the email builder, the system usability, segmentation abilities. I'll explain how the two systems allow you to automate your emails, the integration that they have with other programs, and also briefly touch on reporting, RSS feed emails, and pricing. Yeah, so I better get to business real fast, right? Because that's a lot of stuff to cover in one podcast. So let's do it. Starting with the email builder. So first, I wanna let you know that these two systems are very comparable for ease of use. You can easily build an email in each user interface with little to no experience, and both systems become highly malleable with a bit of CSS and HTML knowledge. It is easy to make and save templates in both programs. It's no problem. Now, neither one of them has super exciting templates, so it, I don't really know if you need to pay to get extra ones. Um, I, I'm not saying that I've never used email templates before. I certainly have, and they are definitely time savers. But there are lots of blocks that you can use to build your emails in each of the systems. As far as block options go, MailerLite has way more block options than MailChimp does. That doesn't mean that you can't do lots of things with the MailChimp blocks. You certainly can, but there are more pre-designed drag and drop blocks in MailerLite for you to use. Now, one of the things that I notice a lot when I'm building emails is load time on a program and whether there's a lag. The MailChimp editor, it hops along pretty quick. There's not a lot of lag on that program. Now, the load time in MailerLite can definitely get you down. I'm telling you, there's times where I'm so frustrated and I just have to like, I, it's like the longer I work on an email and try to perfect it, the slower the stinking program gets. And so that is very sad. One thing to note though, for building your emails is, you know, you build them first and then you got to schedule them to send. And the free MailChimp account does not let you schedule an email to send. You have to log in and click send on it right then and there. And in MailerLite, you can schedule your emails with a free account. Now, when it comes to overall like system usability, I actually switched to MailerLite because it is so easy to use. It just makes a lot of sense. Um, I do feel like there could probably be some in improvements. There's definitely times where I think, man, I sure do wish I could get to this other page faster. But overall, I can get where I wanna go without thinking too hard. Now on MailChimp, <laughs> on the other hand, okay, I'm an, I'm an, so I'm an iPhone user. And when I'm in this system, I honestly feel like I'm trying to operate an Android. Like where's the camera, right? Like I have to think so hard and everything is buried someplace. There's so much clicking. There's just so much clicking. All right, so moving on to segmentation. If you need super advanced segmentation, you might have to go with MailChimp because MailerLite is short on segmentation options. So in MailChimp, you have audiences like at the tippy top of your organization, Pi, right? And then audiences can be segmented into groups and then subscribers can also be tagged. And on top of all that, you can create and save segments of subscribers as well. And if you are a new email marketer, tread very carefully before using all of these things willy-nilly or on a whim, or else you'll have no idea what you've done or where anything is or what any of it means. I know, because I totally did that. <laughs> okay, I had a tag for email webinar and a group for email webinar and then a segment for email webinar. And then sometimes I used one and sometimes I used another. And then by the end, I literally had to create a segment so that way I could sort all three together and have a clue who everybody was. I will not go into the theory of what each of these should be used for, but just know that they all have their place and they are all super convenient as segmentation is a value to you and you really need segmentation. MailChimp has far more than MailerLite. In MailerLite, you only have groups and segments. There's no audiences and there's no tags. 
And when I lost my MailChimp tags, it was like losing my silverware divider. All of my cutlery is just like living in the same drawer with no way to sort it, but to label each subscriber with a user field, do I identify it as a spoon, a knife, or a fork? (laughs) And so now my user profiles are totally bloated because I had to add a subscriber field for each offering, an event, or anything else I ever wanted to sort them by. So it was a huge bummer because I wanted to keep my groups really clean. I didn't want them to be bloated as well had to pick one or the other um the other thing is too is that you can't add people to anything other than groups automatically based on their email behavior so if they click on a link or if they subscribe or if you're doing something in an automation you can only move them to a group you can't ever move them into another segment so segments are great but they are for filtering they are not for much else so for example in mailer light and it's the same way in mailchimp too you can add people to segments but essentially all your segments do is filter your group or they, they filter by group or they filter by user data right those are the only two things you can filter by so if your subscribers all have spoon in the cutlery user field then you can filter by that parameter and you can add them to a segment called spoon and then you can email all your spoons and that's totally cool um but (laughs) without the user field if you delete a segment you'll never know if they're a spoon or not and even if they added themselves from the spoon form you do not know it's Ah, the horror, I'm telling you. (laughs) It's like, I figured that one out too. Okay, so definitely if you need lots of segmentation, boom, you're going to want to go with um, MailChimp. Okay, so now on to automation. Now, MailerLite automations allow you, and, and MailChimp Journeys, both of them, allow you to move subscribers from group to group to other automations you can update their profile information you can send emails based on certain criteria um, and all these actions are conditional so that's with mailer light automations and with mailchimp journeys now mailchimp journeys are not available in the free plan okay so when you look at the user interface of mailer light it is far more useful like the overview of the automation already gives me reporting and data about the emails that are being sent and I can see it right away. I'm, I know whether this thing is performing right and when I click on it, I can see even more information. It's very easy to see how your automations are performing and how the emails are performing within your automations. Very easy to see. In MailChimp, back in the day, I used classic automations. Now. I just mentioned they have journeys. So they have journeys and they have classic automations. Now, other than the user interface between those two, the the biggest difference is that classic automations force you to send an email with each step of the automation. So all of your actions are actually attached to an email. You can't just tag someone or add them to a group unless you send an email while doing it. And... (laughs) So, I mean, that kind of stinks. But the nice thing about using classic automations in MailChimp is that you actually get reporting data about the automation as a whole. If you don't use a classic automation, I I honestly have no idea how you find it. Like, I mean, seriously, I've looked and looked. I've, I've dug for it. I've Googled it. And I mean, like, I can Google like a mother. I'm serious. I am a good Googler and I am a mother. So that's why I can Google like a mother. Like, I'm so good. And I have got to be missing something here, folks, because I cannot find it. The emails that I build in my journeys, I can't see how they're performing, which makes them completely useless to me. Completely useless. Okay. So in the classic automations, though, you can see your email data broken down by email and as a group, and that makes it really useful. But yeah, so it's confusing. And then two more tiny things about automations. One is that in MailerLite, you can actually send an email based on a day. So you can say, I wanna send an email on February 14th, 
and it will send an email on that day for you. So that can be super convenient because if you have events coming up, you can group all those emails together, which means you can copy them for next year or just change the dates and you can just use them all over again. That's super convenient. But I will say that if you set an action to send an email on a specific date, anyone who joins after that date, they won't go through the rest of the automation, right? Because they joined after the date. So that's that. And if you have, for example, like a one day delay in your automation, so a person joins a list and then there's one day that they wait before they get a follow-up email and then an email sends on a date, no one who joined the day before will get the email on the date because they're still waiting on the follow-up email to be sent and all of those boxes have to be checked before it will move to the next one. So it's a perfectly imperfect system. And also in MailerLite, okay, and you can't do that. You can't do that in MailChimp unless you have the date in a subscriber's profile. So if you're going to try to send things based on dates, mm -hmm, you're going to want to use MailerLite. And then last but not least, if you are planning on starting to use automations in MailChimp, just know that if you delete a, a step in your journey, it will delete all the stuff underneath it. All of it. Bye-bye. So, oh my gosh, I was so upset when that happened <laughs> and you can't undo it. It's just done. Ugh. Okay. But in MailerLite, they actually ask you like, if like, do you want to delete all the stuff after this on the right or on the left? Meaning, you know, cause it's conditional. So do you want to delete all the stuff for yes and the stuff for no, or just the stuff for yes or just the stuff for no. And man, thank you. Thank you, MailerLite people, for doing that because that made my day when I found it. Okay, so let's move on to integration. Now, this is the saddest part about MailerLite. <laughs> Other than that laggy load time drama that I was talking about earlier, it really does not integrate with everything under the sun. It just, it does not have the integration capabilities of MailChimp, period. So it doesn't integrate with my forms plugin. So I either have to build my form in MailerLite, which really limits the functionality dramatically for my form, or I have to use Zapier to connect the two. So I just zap it and it's okay. I was using Zapier to connect MailChimp with my reporting tool anyway. So it's just one more zap, right? But MailChimp is going to connect with like almost everything, almost everything under the sun. I swear I've integrated it in the darndest ways with client websites. And for some of you, that may very well be the deal breaker. Like if it's going to make your life easier and it's going to take a step out and save you time, then by all means, like use MailChimp. I've even used MailChimp as a pass through from one application to another. So I had one application that a client wanted to talk to another application, but they didn't talk to each other. But MailChimp talked to both of them. And so it became the communicator between the two softwares. It was super cool and it did a good job of it. So it integrates with everything. Next up in this riveting comparison is reporting. Mm -hmm. Because reporting is like, man, it's so important to me. Like, why are we sending emails if we don't know if they're bombing, right? Like, why even waste your time if it's not working? So in MailerLite, I really do like the initial reporting view. It's it's a compact view. It's easy to skim. It gives me high level information that I need. And in MailChimp, it's more spread out and the information is harder to sort through. They actually give you more, but it's harder to scan. So I don't like it as much. Also, we send a lot of RSS emails for our clients and for ourselves. And well, I'll, I mean, I've explained what they are so many times, but I'll, I'll explain them again in a second. So the nice thing about MailerLite is it puts those with all of your other emails. It reports it all together. So I just see it all in a view and it's like they're nothing different. They're just another email that's sent on a day and it's all in chronological order, which makes it super great for reporting. Now in MailChimp, all your RSS feed emails are actually reported into one email that you have to click on to view the data, which is good because then you can see it all together, which is nice, but then it's bad because you're, <laughs> you have to do more clicking and you can't see it in the lineup of everything. So 
I don't know. I don't like it. And it doesn't tell you what the titles are. You can't see what your subject lines are on the emails. It just says, here's the day I sent an RSS campaign. And I'm like, great. I'd love to open every single one of these and see what the subject lines are. And then I'm really going to know what my audience likes. This is where my spreadsheet journey started, right, from all this. Now, each of them offer lots of single email reporting features. Lots of stuff, right? Emails sent. Um, opens, clicks, unsubscribes, who clicked, like physically the email addresses of those people, what clicks um, happened, like what links they clicked on. They show you click maps. They show you opens by location if you have a paid plan. Now here's where they differ. Mailer Light shows you top email clients, like what email clients people are using, and reading environment data, like are they on a mobile phone, are they on the web, where are they? Now, MailChimp, on the other hand, it doesn't share those two things, but it does share predicted demographics, campaign benchmarking, which is pretty clever because it tells you how this campaign did in comparison to your other campaigns, and it also tells you how this campaign is performing in comparison to other campaigns in your industry. So other tracking features that MailChimp has that MailerLite doesn't are 24-hour performance and the content optimizer. And I do like the content optimizer a lot. It's an upgraded feature, but it is really useful for new email marketers and forgetful folks like myself because it reminds you of all the things that you should be doing to make it a good email. So it's always a really nice refresher. Boom. Okay, friends, so we only have two other things that I wanted to compare for you before you can make your decision about which one of these systems might or might not be the awesomest one for you. First is RSS feed emails, and then second is pricing. So an email that sends using an RSS feed is, well, first off, you have to have your website set up correctly so that when you put information into it, like into your blog or into your news, it is stored in an RSS feed. So you're putting it in as posts, and then it can syndicate it very simply so that another program can read it, like your email marketing software. So we set it up so that the email marketing software looks at the website to see if there's anything new that's been posted, and then it formats it as we've set it up to do it, and then it sends the email automatically whenever you add stuff to your website. So this is an amazing way to save time and maintain communication with your audience. Like if you're in my normal audience and you got this email, you got it because of an RSS feed email. So it's super clever. Now, Whenever I look at email softwares, I'm always looking to see which one does this right. So MailerLite is actually the least flexible of the two. You can totally adjust the items in your RSS feed email using like the user interface because there's a very nice block that you can use to insert it into your emails. And you do have some customizable features there, but it's not nearly as customizable as in MailChimp. MailChimp is super, super flexible. Like you can present it pretty much any way that you want if you have some experience with CSS and HTML. Now, the creation of this email, the initial creation, is actually really simple in each of them. Just a couple clicks of a button and then you have to learn how to find your RSS feed and you've got it. And that that's, that's pretty awesome. So it's pretty painless no matter which system you're using. The good news is in MailChimp, you can actually do this with the free plan. So that saves you all kinds of time and money because you can do it for free in the free plan. And MailChimp is super customizable, but you have to have a clue how to customize it. You'll need some experience with CSS and a little HTML and some common sense so you can use our code blocks to customize your RSS feed email. So if you're short on those things, you're gonna wanna go with MailerLite. Okay, so now let's talk about pricing. I wanted to talk about the starter plans and kind of compare and contrast them. So now I'm not gonna go through this line item because I think that would be nauseating, but I did wanna go through a few highlights so that you can compare and contrast these two based on their fee structures. Ultimately, the base offering for MailerLite is pretty generous. You get 1,000 contacts, you can send 12,000 emails, you have unlimited groups, You don't get templates, but you can schedule your emails, you can A-B test, you can do surveys, build landing pages, create automations, you get email support, and those packages with all their features, except for the add-ons, they have additional features that you can pay more money for, but I don't know who needs them, it's not me. Um, So those start at like $10 per month. So for me, it costs me like $30 a month to manage all my emails through MailerLite. 
Now, for that same service in MailChimp, I used to pay almost $150 a month. Now, the free account in MailChimp has 2,000 contacts and you can send 10,000 emails a month. You get an, one audience. You do get some basic email templates, but you cannot schedule your emails and you cannot A-B test. You can do surveys. You can set up landing pages. You can have one-step automations. So that's just one step. So that means, I don't know. I don't know what you're going to do with that one step, but not a whole lot. (laughs) But you can also social post and create social media ads, and you get 30 days worth of email support. Now, the basic package in MailChimp is $11 a month. So it starts at $11 a month, but that's only for 500 subscribers. So that's not a lot, but it would allow you to schedule your emails and do some A-B testing and use their pre-built email templates. So it comes with its its advantages, right? I know that for me, it was definitely more cost-effective to go with MailerLite, but um, (laughs) I, I learned so much from MailChimp. And like I said, I have over 60 clients on it that use it and it is the right choice for them. So if you want to read this, if you want to see screenshots of the user interfaces, if you want to see my comparison chart of the two, then hop on over to maycreate.com because I wrote this fabulous blog post about it with two columns and all kinds of different things and so many screenshots because I think the user interface is so important for me and that's why I ended up going with the one that I went with because it's just easier for me to use. It's like my iPhone, right? And what's really funny is while I was typing out this whole blog post, I I typed out Miller Lite instead of Mailer Lite so many times. <laughs> And I thought about actually leaving it in there once or twice just to see if anybody would notice. And at that point, I like, well, at at this point, really, I feel like I might just have to go get a cold beer after all this email system comparison therapy, right? But okay, I'm going to let you go now. And thank you so much for your time. My kids just popped in because it's the end of the day and they're going to come sign off with me. Okay, so first girls, why don't you introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Ellis. Hi, I'm Aveline. So if you enjoyed this podcast or if you learned a thing or two or maybe I helped you solve a problem, please do me a favor and leave a review because those reviews help me meet more people just like you and help other people solve problems in their businesses every single day. Now, my ladies are going to help me sign off. So until next time... Go forth and purpose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try that one more time. <laughs> Go, Go forth and, and mark it with purpose. purpose. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was terrible. Can we just try it one more time? It's On the count of one, two, two three. three. Go, Go forth and mark it with purpose.